Man, Albion can be a pretty confusing game sometimes. And I'm saying that as an all-knowing mage that's been playing Albion for the past three years. And it's especially confusing when it comes to creating your own build. So my friend, don't worry about creating your own build. Just let your friendly neighborhood mage help. Today, I'm going to give you three different builds for three different types of content. And those builds in that particular type of content absolutely slap. Those are very cheap builds, very beginner friendly that require zero spec. And it's all about making you a better player and making you much richer than you are right now let's just jump into it starting off with a pvp build let me show you the pvp build that you want to be using as a new player what a pvp build in my opinion should be for a new player is a cheap build as cheap as possible and a low spec build if possible even a zero spec this build that i'm going to show you right now has both of those things it requires zero spec and it's insanely cheap and this is the build that i'm talking about first of all it costs 35k silver, 35k silver. Just for reference, my normal build that I use is 350k silver, so 10 times more. You can literally buy 10 sets of this build instead of buying one set of the build that I normally use. And you're gonna see how strong this build can actually get. The build itself consists of Hunterhood with the third spell, first passive. I'm just gonna explain the spells as they come up, so in a way to not overwhelm you, like to not explain everything in one go. This does two things. Reflects 100% of the damage and it increases your resistances. It first reflects, so if you take 100 damage, you're going to reflect 100 damage and then it applies resistances, even though for you, both of those things happen at the same time. But it's important to keep track of that because if this would do the opposite, first apply resistances, then reflect, you would actually reflect less damage because the damage reflected would be damage after resistances. And I'm just saying that's not the case. This passive makes it so you deal more damage, straight up. You also have a little bit more defense and you also have a healing cast. The healing cast is not important for you, so just damage and defense. Then you have the Cleric Robe. The Cleric Robe, it's a pretty interesting uh, skill that I feel like a lot of new players could use in the wrong way, but at the same time, it's pretty easy to learn how to use it properly. Invoke a magical ward that lasts for 1.5 seconds. The next time you take damage while the ward is active, so in those 1.5 seconds, you will become immune to damage for 3 seconds. Okay, kind of complicated. Let me explain it like this. You do this, and you have a 1.5 seconds buff right there. If you get damaged while that buff is over there, a second buff gets applied to you that, first of all, makes it so you take zero damage, you are immune to all sources of damage for three seconds, and second of all, it increases all your damage and your healing, but again, the healing is not important, by 20%. If you can manage to time your E with the W and with this, you're one-shotting everybody. But I'm gonna get there in a second to explain exactly how this works. Oh, and the passive, sorry, I forgot about this again damage and healing cast. Just the damage is important. Then you want to have soldier boots with the second, a second ability and second passive. There are some situations in which you might want to use this. No, and I'm going to explain certain swaps and certain things that you could do a little bit later after I showcase the current build. This makes you move fast and restores HP over time. Uh, it has like a 15 seconds HP. Oh, 40, 40 HP. That, that's pretty good. I thought it was just 15 HP. All right. Uh, every few seconds. And this buff also, I mean, this passive also increases your defense. Uh, you are very much a squishy beard. Like, I know it seems like you have a lot of defensives for anything and stuff like that, but because you are wearing the cleric robe, like a cloth armor, you are dealing an insane amount of damage, but you are also taking an insane amount of damage. That's why, in my opinion, from all the robes, the cleric robe is probably your best option because it enables you to stop taking damage. You want to have the curse staff? Every single ability, you want to keep it on the first one. There are some swaps, but not very important for this video necessarily. And the first passive. The first Q applies um, a dot damage and also deals damage. This dot damage stacks up to four times. This debuffs your enemy, reducing their resistances and also dealing damage. And this is probably your main source of damage and is the main source, uh, the main ability that you want to be buffing. This ability, you are buffing it with your W and you're buffing it with your Cleric Rope. This, depending on the number of cursed charges that you apply with your Q, you have on your enemy, depending on the number of uh, dots that you have on your enemy, will deal up to 1,400 or almost damage. 1,400 damage. Keep in mind, the resistances will get applied to this and your target will actually take much less damage. But because you have so many boosts in damage, you are actually going to still get a pretty big amount of damage on your enemy. With this ability, if played rightly and if your opponent is particularly squishy, you can one-shot somebody from full HP with this. If your opponent is not squishy, in two E's you should be able to get rid of them or by the time you use your E, you should be able to get rid of them. Because keep in mind, all the other abilities also deal damage. Now, again, I want to move quickly through this. 
you also have the shield offhand, a normal cape, some healing pots and maybe some resistance pots as a swap and you also want to have beef stew. I've already consumed it because while I was showcasing the build somebody invaded. This build itself will cost you about i think it was 35k silver with the food and with all the potions 35k silver for one build that can do this much damage and keep in mind i've already made back uh, the profit for the next few builds so i can literally use the uh, i mean i can literally lose the next few corrupted and i'm still gonna make a profit the general playstyle behind this build is that you want to queue your opponent as much as you can you want to apply your e when your opponent is at three or four stacks if it's a three stacks you want to apply the fourth stack i mean it way you want to still apply one more stack after you've applied your e so you make sure that the stacks don't run out if your opponent starts kiting and as your opponent starts running away from you because they will start running away from you you want to make sure you hit them with a w and that's it if your opponent pops a reflect or is doing a lot of damage to you you can block yourself and protect yourself with this or if your opponent uses mercenary jacket on you you can use this for yourself and furthermore if it's still doing like if your opponent is still doing a big amount of damage to you you can still block yourself with this you don't have a lot of defensives but the defensive that you have should help you through just killing your enemy quite quite fast Nice! Let's go chat and look at this. I got four times or more than four times than my build worth. More than four times than my build worth. This build slaps. This build slaps. When you're running with a cheap build, you gotta keep in mind one fact. You're not gonna kill everybody. There's a reason my main build costs 350k. There's a reason people are willing to pay that amount of silver because those builds actually work really well. My point in showing you this build is not to say that, hey, all of the players that are using expensive builds, they don't know this, man. This forbidden information that you have access to. No, that's not my point. My point in doing this is to show you that you as a new player do not need to risk high amounts of silver, especially when it comes to PvP. That's the general rotation behind the PvP build that I wanted to show you. All right, but enough with the PvP. The PvP, alright, that's something, but maybe you don't want to jump straight into PvP. Maybe you want to start with some PvE, in which case, the following build is going to help you more. The second build that I want to show you today, I feel like it's a better idea for me to actually show it first and then talk about it. Just so you can actually see the type of potential that this build has and uh, what this build can actually do. If I don't get stream sniped, I'm probably going to be able to showcase this whole thing. Okay, let me, let me die here. That's a little bit of an oopsie. In, uh, in static dungeons, there's no room for oopsies, chat. It is what it is, but there's no room for oopsies. That's why I, I preferred to actually not even try. Like, hey, I pulled the bosses. All right, let me just die. Reset. Dying is not actually something that I mind right now because I do have higher IP. And by dying, I actually reduce my IP. And I'm going to try, after I kill this boss, to reduce my IP even further by just dying, like to get yellow gear to show you what you can do with it. Okay, you know what? Let's let's come this way. Let's come this way. So I make sure I don't pull those mobs accidentally. That mob is just look at look at that one over there. That's stressing me out so much. Are you sure about that? Man, I need to focus so much. This is hard. This is hard to do. It's really hard to do. It's probably the toughest solo PvE because if you mess something up, you just die. Like, there's no there's no going back for it. Because technically, you're not supposed to be able to solo this. I mean, not really. I think this should be... No, I don't think it should be solo, but actually... <gasps> you see, the Mage Cow has changed. Previously, the mage car was above that you applied to yourself, and I used it like it used to be used. Like, without having to actually aim it and stuff. That could have led to my demise, chat. Heal up. Full HP gang. Come on, I just want to get this over with. Come on! 
Man, you're annoying. But you're not impossible. Can. Don't you dare aggro. Don't you dare aggro. No, 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 no. Don't you dare aggro. Nice. Oh, surprise. It's a green chest. How much we get? 47k. We made the profit for our build right here. Like, straight up, we just have the profit right, right here. And I'm not even joking. That's the build right there. The PvE build that you want to be using with zero spec requirement is this right here. First of all, let me show you the price of the build. 27k. With the food and with the swap for food, it's about 35k. Let's just round it up to 40k. So, 40k build. But as you can see, I'm rounding it up by quite a lot. I'm using Mage Cow with the third spell, first passive. Now, let me explain the abilities as they come up. Let me quickly just walk through them. This is dot damage, gets applied to the enemies in a radius in front of you, and it looks kind of cool. You want to have the first passive. This passive makes your uh, damage hitting abilities deal more damage. So that's actually great. And it also increases your heal cast, which actually matters for this build. Then you have Mercenary Jacket. Mercenary Jacket, third spell, first passive. The third spell makes it so you heal every single time you attack. So every single time you attack your target, you heal for 95 up to seven times so you can heal 95 times seven and the first passive makes it so you deal more damage and you heal a little bit more and you also have a damage defense increase furthermore you want to have soldier boots with the same passive that increases your defensives and with the second ability that makes you move fast and heal up over time it looks kind of like this the mercenary jacket looks kind of like this and it heals every single time you hit somebody while you have this buff available on you or active on you okay so we go to the weapon the weapon is the druidic staff you want to use the second q the second W and second pass starting off with the Q uh, okay this very simple makes a puddle the puddle deals damage the puddle applies a debuff to your enemies that make you deal more damage with auto attacks that's all there is to it okay yeah there's a lot of text that explains how this whole works don't worry about that you can cast it up to three times usually you don't really have to cast it up to three times because that wastes a lot of your energy basically just cast it once Maybe wait for it a little bit, keep track of it over there and cast it again until it goes on cooldown. And again, just wait for it, let it sit over there for a second. But normally you don't really have to cast it more than once if you are not PvPing. Like if you're PvPing, yes, your enemy will run everywhere, you're gonna have to cast this everywhere, but you don't really want to PvP with this. This is the PvE build. Then you want to have the second W. The second W makes it so you start channeling and you heal. It also restores your energy on the in the process. To target yourself, you want to press Alt and W. This is how it looks like. It can get interrupted by damage. So keep that in mind. Usually you want to use this whenever you have an opportunity in between mob attacks. So like the mob does an AoE, you dodge that AoE and you start hitting by the time the animation of the mob is finished. Then you have your main source of HP, your E. This puts a buff on you in a way that in a few seconds will trigger and restore some HP for you back. So you just buff yourself, wait for it a second, you get healed instantaneously. I mean instantaneously after, not really instantaneously, you, you get healed. And that's uh, the whole thing about the build. You also want to have a torch, a normal cape, you want to have some roast pork for when you're fighting the mobs. And if you want to do statics, I should give you some swaps for statics so you have a little bit of an easier experience, but those swaps will add to the cost. The reason I'm showing this build is because you can literally just go into statics, risk yourself dying, like there's really not a thing to worry about for this because it's a 50, it's a 30k build 40k build so you really don't have to worry about dying like what happens if you die i made my build in one chest and i got more than half or yeah more than half of the build from bags so you really don't have to worry about just running around in the static but if you want to have an easier experience you should bring spectre shoes royal uh cowl and assassin jacket for swaps those things however will add up to 100k silver so about three times more than the build itself a little bit less than three times more and uh, the play style of the build basically you just want to use your Q on mobs, auto attack them as much as you can, use your Q again if you need to, and keep auto attacking them, debuff them with a poison, because you also want to have some poisons as a swap, keep queuing them, if you need heals, heal yourself with the E, and if you find a window in which, let's say, a mob does a big AoE, a conal AoE, you dodge that conal AoE, by the time the mob finishes the AoE, you can actually start hitting yourself with the W. And uh, only if you have nothing available to you, that's when you want to use your R. Like if you don't have your E, if you don't have your W, yet you still need heals, that's when you use your R. The R is a last resort heal. That's when you want to use it. The D is something that you use as soon as you get it and every single time you have it, you want to use it. And the F is something that you use to dodge AoEs faster. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Keep in mind, if you want to solo statics, you can only solo the bosses, but you can even solo some red bosses. In this static, again, it's not a static guy, but I'm just saying so you know this boss and uh, this boss 
those two bosses that are located over there are the only ones that are non soloable this one right here you can even solo in the full red form this one right here the same in the full red form and i think even this one right here this one you cannot solo if it's in orange form but again that's a different topic for a different video that's the thing that it comes to uh, what, uh, when it comes to this build this is the pve build that you want to be using okay you've seen both of those builds and uh, okay they're great builds but what if you want something in between what if you want something versatile that works for both pvp and pve i got you squad fam i got you man check this out the build itself goes like this. This is the versatile build that you want to be using. Hunter Hood, we've seen this all day, so you already know what the Hunter Hood does. Uh, there's the Mercenary Jacket. Again, we've seen this so far all day, so you absolutely know what this build, uh, what this one does. Soldier Boots, same thing. We already know what this does. You have a Torch Offhand. The Torch Offhand makes it so you have less cooldowns in a way. It reduces, um, I mean, it increases the time in which your cooldowns regenerate. So uh, one second is going to pass faster because of the Torch. You want to have a normal spear plain normal spear like no artifacts nothing like that you want to have the first q the first w and the second pass let me explain the first q does two main i mean three main things slows the target deals damage and it applies a spirit uh, spear charge, I think it's called. Yeah, spirit spear charge on you that stacks up to three times. Like this is a stackable buff that makes you deal more damage with e every single stack. So you end up actually doing a lot more damage with your normal attacks, with your normal attacks. So keep in mind, those are auto attacks. So you're not going to increase the damage of your abilities, just the damage of your auto attacks. You want to auto attack pretty heavily with this build. The W is a conal AOE that straight up deals damage. That's all there is to it. The good thing about this W is that it works very very well with your mercenary jacket but we're gonna go into synergies a little bit later then you want to have this e this e basically consumes your spirit uh, spear charges and makes you deal damage and also interrupts your enemy sometimes the interrupt can be very very useful you want to use this when you have three charges because it can deal up to 600 damage keep in mind damage before resistances the resistances of the player that you're fighting will actually decrease this damage by quite a lot so don't expect this to do full 610 damage okay now the the way you play this build you want to mainly spam your Qs. You always want to auto attack because of the fact that you have roast pork for food every single time you deal damage you're gonna steal HP because you have this passive on the spear every single time you deal auto attack damage you're, so, you're also gonna steal HP so you're basically gonna be able to heal yourself by just uh, doing stuff like that by just dealing damage in a way. Okay then you want to have healing potions. You could swap this for resistance potions but I feel like the healing pots are the best. Okay the way this build plays you want to be spamming your Qs as much as you can whenever you find a window in which you can deal damage or if you need to interrupt something that's when you use your e you need to try to prioritize using your e whenever whenever you have three q stacks like whenever you have three spirit uh, spear charges stacks that's when you want to use your e though if you use it to interrupt something or to get away from something just use it whenever the w you can use it on its own because it has a fairly low cooldown but the best way to use it in my opinion if you're fighting a 1vx fight you gotta pair it with your r this setup that i have right now this is the open world setup that allows you to survive 1vx fights now again i'm running tier 4 gear so not really good for 1vx fights if you want the 1v1 option you can stick with this or you can get a little bit more of an expensive spear i think those abilities appear um yeah okay uh, you can even go with this one and use this w right here though that's not low spec so you if you like this set it's worth grinding it up to get this or you can go even higher up to tier 6 and get this ability right here but again this is not low spec this is another video in itself so if you just stay with this loadout even in 1v1s you should be able to deal quite a lot of damage sometimes you might want to swap to this again i'm trying to move very quickly to those builds so i don't make the video last like half an hour which probably it's already half an hour uh, but yeah, I don't want to make the video any longer than it needs to be. If you guys want me to go into absolute details for every one of those builds, because I have pre, uh, like I have a pretty big amount of experience with all of them, just let me know and I'll make dedicated videos. But this is like a quick walk. If you get damage, you can reflect this damage with the D. If you got damage already and you gotta heal up, you can heal up with R and W. This is an insanely good combo. Furthermore, you can use your healing pot in PvP. Or you should have also some uh, poison pots actually for PvE to make yourself clear a little bit faster. And you have the F mainly for mobility but also for a little bit of sustain. Okay, now pop your nose. <gasps> Look at this!
No, that's a lot of damage. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown. This video was made possible by our amazing channel members. If you want to support by becoming a channel member yourself, you are going to get access to amazing emotes that you can use in the comment section or during live streams, member only polls and lots of other awesome perks. Shout out to all of you awesome badasses. Thank you so much for supporting us.